Hi guys, this is Kimmy Angs and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part two of the beginner's guide to MotoGP. And if you guys have not seen part one, I will be leaving the link in the description below. Get yourself acquainted with part one of this beginner's guide. Anyways, uh, going straight into part two, the comparisons and the differences that we see in MotoGP from WSBK as well as Formula One. Well, first up, let's compare MotoGP with the World Superbike Championship, which is also uh, racing on two wheels. The biggest difference between the WSPK and uh, MotoGP is uh, basically the World Superbike Championship has roadworthy bikes or production bikes that have been tuned and uh, upgraded aerodynamically. Whereas in MotoGP, well, these are GP specific bikes. There is no, there are as such no restrictions on MotoGP in MotoGP as compared to the kind of clampdowns that uh, WSBK teams have financially there are a lot more restrictions on a WSBK team as compared to a MotoGP team and uh, there are teams like Kawasaki that only participate in the WSBK series and then there is KTM that participates only in the MotoGP series and uh, then there are teams like Ducati or Honda that race in both the categories. MotoGP actually has three classes um, you have moto 3 moto 2 and moto gp uh, moto 3 is you can say similar to formula 3 moto 2 is similar to formula 2 and then you've got moto gp which is similar to formula 1 moto gp is called the premier class the moto 3 bike is approximately 250 cc the Moto2 bike is 765cc, the Moto GP bike is 1000cc. I'll be talking more on those engine specs later in this video. Some of these teams actually have a presence in Moto GP itself. They actually have rider programs of their own, just like how we see driver programs in Formula 1, wherein they track the progress of all their riders through the smaller classes and as they make their way up into the pecking orders into the premier class. Besides these three, besides Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP, uh, you have Moto E as well, which is the electric, which is the electric series on two wheels. And um, unlike Formula E, uh, Moto E is held on the same tracks as a MotoGP event, except that they are not held at all the racing events. Big difference between f the Formula 3, Formula 2, Formula 1 events and the Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP events are that the feeder series of Moto GP or the feeder series of two wheel racing, the Moto 3 and Moto 2, these races are held at every race that Moto GP goes to. Unlike Formula 1, where you have certain tracks that host only a Formula 1 race, or certain tracks that host only a Formula 1 and a Formula 2 race, and then there are certain tracks that actually host all the three races. That's not the case in Moto GP. You always have Moto 3, Moto 2, and Moto GP at every race event in the 2023 season. So, at MotoGP of Bharat, you have Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP. Unfortunately, we do not have Moto Electric or Moto E coming this year. We do not know if they will make their presence felt in 24. First up, let's talk about the heart of the bike itself, the engine. Um, MotoGP and WSBK, both these series, you have 1000cc, uh, four-stroke, uh, engines and uh, you have the option of either going in a v4 format or an inline 4 yamaha is the only manufacturer that actually has an inline 4 layout whereas the other four manufacturers have a v4 layout for their engines with varying angles of the v coming to the power output well um, a moto gp bike has um, a power output of almost 300 bhp with um, a weight of 157 kilograms comparing that to the world superbike well you have probably around the 170 kg mark and uh, their power output is somewhere around the 240 250 bhp mark and these are naturally aspirated engines the fastest a uh, motor gp bike has gone to date is 363.6 kmph uh, which was set by jorge martin on his ducati uh, prime uh, prima primac ducati and this was in Mugello. Probably uh, this speed record could get broken 
at the MotoGP of Bharat because we have a kilometer long straight. All the bikes have one standardized ECU or electronics control unit uh, built by Magneti Morelli which is supplied to all the bikes on the grid and this ECU has traction control system but no ABS or any of the other assists that you would be looking at. So they do have traction control system to help the riders and this ECU basically controls the power output as well as uh, the torque delivery that we have to the rear wheels. The engine of uh, you know a manufacturer in MotoGP has to be homogulated before the start of the season and once it is homogulated there can be no changes to that engine throughout the season. The only exception that a manufacturer can have is when the uh, the FIM cites that there is, a, there is a problem with the safety, only then they can actually make changes to the engine. But once they have received approval at the start of the season, that is the engine that they have to rough it out with for the entire length of the season. The teams have to come with an aero package at the start of the season. And then post that, probably around the midpoint of the season is the next time when they actually have the option of getting a new package onto the bike. So you've got fairings, you've got winglets, all sorts of stuff that <laughs> these um, Mot MotoGP manufacturers do to extract as much performance as they can from their bikes. Interestingly, um, the aerodynamic program is quite robust for almost all these uh, manufacturers. In fact, uh, KTM works closely with its title sponsor Red Bull and the Red Bull Formula 1 team in Milton Keynes to build their aero packages on the bikes. And um, we've been seeing a lot of innovations and interesting bits coming out of these tables over the past two years. There is something called as concessions in the world of MotoGP, which is a very interesting thing because it actually helps uh, the teams that or rather the manufacturers that are lagging behind so what are these concessions that i'm talking of when a new manufacturer joins the sport moto gp or rather dorna and fim allow that manufacturer to have more number of test days more number of wildcard entries and more number of engines for that season this allows that team to get up to speed quicker and get closer to the competition or rather to the people at the front. For example, we had up until the end of 2022, Aprilia was one of the teams that enjoyed this concession. If a team fails to score a podium in a season and it fails to reach a threshold of points for that season, then concessions are passed on to that manufacturer. The normal allocation of engines for a season are seven for MotoGP, for a MotoGP team, but if a team has concession or if a manufacturer has concession they enjoy nine engines so aprilia had nine engines to 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 race with for 2022 besides that uh, there is something called as a wild card entry now what is a wild card entry i did not cover that in part one because i wanted to talk about this as a whole in part two itself uh, every manufacturer has the option of bringing in three wild card entries in a season but these three car wild card entries cannot happen at consecutive Grand Prix. Well, it is basically uh, an exercise which allows manufacturers to have an extra bike on the grid. This is only for the factory teams, mind you. It's not for the satellite teams. So they can actually bring an extra, extra bike and an extra rider on the grid. Most of the time, it's their test rider. So for example, in Misano, we had Danny Pedroza who was a wild card entry for KTM and you had uh, Michele Piro um, who was um, the wildcard entry for the factory Ducati team and then you had Stefan Brodel who was racing for the Honda factory team as the wildcard entry. They participate in all the practice sessions, they participate in the qualifying, the sprint as well as the race and they are gathering data for the teams and uh, helping them build a more robust and a more agile as well as a more powerful bike for their championship hopes. Now, if you have a manufacturer with concessions, instead of three wildcard entries, they enjoy six wildcard entries and they can be at consecutive Grand Prix. 
now this makes it really interesting because it gives far more exposure to the new manufacturer on the grid to the racing in MotoGP and it helps them build a bike that is faster quicker in a less amount of in, in, in a much shorter time than they would have planned for this is what I love about MotoGP something that Formula 1 should learn from because this brings parity quicker in the field and it brings racing closer between the teams making it a spectacle to behold for the fans uh, well there has been news that has been doing the rounds where um, the lack of performance from the yamahas and the hondas has kind of made dorna and fim think about extending concessions to their japanese manufacturers to ensure that you know they are able to come up to speed and compete with the likes of ducati aprilia and ktm the bosses at dorna and fim said that um, when Ducati was struggling or rather when Aprilia or KTM was struggling Honda and Yamaha were at the top of the field and they were considerate towards these manufacturers and they expect them to do now they expect these manufacturers to treat the Japanese counterparts in a similar fashion talking about the tires well just like we have pirelli as the sole tire supplier in formula one we have in moto gp michelin who is supplying tires to all the moto gp teams now interestingly in moto gp you do not have an intermediate tire option you only have the dry or the wet tires now in the dry tires you have the soft medium or hard and then in the wet tires you actually have a soft or a medium option it is very different from formula one <laughs> let's talk about the allocation overall uh, you have 22 sets of dry tires and 13 sets of wet tires for every rider for the weekend how are these 22 sets of dry tires broken up well you have 10 tires for the front you have 12 tire allocations for the rear the 12 tire allocations for the rear it's now um, been changed from June where uh, the FIM has said that um, for every rider they will have seven tire compounds of the softer option and five um, compounds of the harder option. It could be a combination of uh, seven soft tires and five mediums or seven mediums and five hards or seven uh, softs and five hards either of these combinations depending on which tire compound Michelin brings to uh, the circuit the 10 tire compound options that the rider has for the front tire he can choose any combination that he wants as long as he chooses at least one compound so he can actually have for example he can have three softs six mediums and one hard or he can have something like two softs five mediums and three hards so as long as he has at least one tire compound each he can have any combination of his own that is the dry um, dry compound setup or rather the dry tire allocation setup <laughs> on the wet we have 13 set of wet tires which get broken down into six uh, tire compounds for the front and seven tire compounds for the rear again uh, they can choose any combination of softer and medium options that they want for the front as well as for the rear uh, i don't know if you guys have seen moto gp races in the past um, or not but there is another dry tire option that moto gp races have uh, uh, it's called the asymmetric tire normally um, you have whatever tires that we see whether it's slicks or the dry tires or the wet tires they have the same level of grip across the entire tire face but the asymmetric tire actually has different levels of rubber on it so for example um, let's look at the red bull ring you actually have more right handed turns than left handed turns so the right right surface or the right side of the tire goes under much more strain than the left side of the tire so in austria michelin actually brings an asymmetric tire which actually has more rubber on the right side or the right face of that tire than the left face of the tire that is basically what the asymmetric tire is all about
finally talking about racing in moto gp and how things are going to pan out at the inaugural grand prix of bharat moto gp bikes are faster than a formula 1 car in straight line but where they actually lose out in terms of speed are at the corners they have lesser contact with the surface the more the rider stays upright upright the quicker he is over the course of a lap the way a rider actually approaches a turn is in a v kind of racing line if you guys want to know more about this head to the moto gp explain section by simon crefa and he does a brilliant job at it racing not just in moto gp but also in moto 3 and moto 2 is very close uh, in terms of competition at so many of the races that we have seen over the years there are in moto 3 especially there are sometimes 16 riders fighting for victory um we have seen similar battles happen in the higher series in higher classes as well in moto 2 where you have five or six riders vying for a race win or even four or five or even three or four riders vying for a race win in moto gp in moto gp you have two bikes per rider and um, there is a bike number 1 and a bike number 2 normally what happens is um, there is a lot of data that um, the teams and the engineers have to glean to understand the perfect setup for a moto gp bike if they make the bike too stiff then it would be stable on the st- in the straight line but it would be less agile in the corners but if they would make the bike softer or less stiffer then it would be more agile in the corners but very unstable down the straight so there is something like a sweet spot that um, a team needs to find for its rider to ride with and uh, it's easier to gather as much info as they can in the practice sessions by using both bikes in tandem with both bikes running slightly different setups to each other so the rider basically goes out when let's say bike number 1 does a few laps comes back in the engineers download the data that they need to download from the bike it's from bike number 1 itself meanwhile the rider will go out with bike number 2 which has a slightly different setup come back in again give his feedback and then choose which setup suits his riding side riding style better in moto gp you do not see pit stops and you do not see tire swaps happening like we see in formula 1 uh, here we have something called as flag to flag racing when it begins to rain or if it has already rain or, or if it is already raining at the start of the race and then the track is drying up so uh, what is a flag to flag race it can throw up some really interesting uh, results uh, once the weather starts to play havoc well just to give you an example let's say we have a dry race start the clouds are away the sun is shining and we have a dry race to start with the riders go out they're racing against each other and let's say a few laps into the race suddenly the crowd the clouds have gathered over the track and it begins to rain um, once it starts raining uh, the marshals start waving a red and white flag basically to inform the riders that there is water on the track or it's raining and this also comes through the digital boards that they have all over the circuit as well then the stewards decide that okay now the time is right for um, the riders to switch over to their second bikes which are actually set up for the wets which has a softer suspension and um, slightly lesser engine power but more traction control to ensure you know the riders have more control over the wet tarmac the riders come into the pits swap their bikes for the second bike the second bike which is actually running the wet setup they go out again and then they start run racing on the wet track the rider either by his own decision when he feels comfortable or as directed by the team uh, via a message that comes up on its on their dashboard uh, the rider comes in to the pits jumps from one bike to the other goes on to the bike with the wet setup goes out and then finishes his race there the one time in the recent past where we've had a flag to flag race but not due to weather was in philip island in 2013 in australia the tires got so worn out so quickly that almost i think every rider actually had to come in and swap over to their second bike for the latter half of the race 
finally what can we expect at moto gp of bharat well first up it's a matter of great pride to see india being considered as one of the destinations for a moto gp race to be held and um, i really really hope that uh, this will help us get back on the motorsports calendar not just for two wheels but also on four um, although it's a very big ask and uh, there are a lot of challenges that we'll have to face along the way there was a time after formula 1 withdrew from india when wsbk were um, considering having india as one of the host countries for a race on the calendar but when they came to the circuit and they inspected the conditions of the track as well as the runoff areas and the walls they decided to not go ahead with any agreement moto gp runs races on a lot of tracks where formula does as, formula 1 does as well so many of the circuits that we see in formula 1 actually host moto gp events as well uh, at different times of the year but uh, there are tweaks and there are changes that the circuit organizers carry out before a moto gp event to ensure that they have the safety standards up to the standards that are needed for hosting a race on two wheels anyways it's great to have uh, india back on the motorsports map of course it started off with formula e in hyderabad and then uh, now it is back to the budh international circuit which was always supposed to serve this purpose and uh, unfortunately after its after formula 1's withdrawal it kind of went into oblivion so big thank you to the up government and uh, the authorities as well as the people who have invested and trusted um this initiative uh, it is very important for we the passionate fans of the sport um you know we do our bit in educating the masses and the people who are new to the sport about the sport itself and it is very important that we have this responsibility of posting quality motorsports content so that those who are new to the sport or those who are just watching the sport out of pure leisure have some sort of respect knowledge and understanding of what is happening on the track anyways guys uh, like i had said at the start of my part 1 video this would be an exhaustive and concise attempt on my part to explain to you as much as i could from the world of moto gp i'm sure i might have missed out on something um uh, in this video and i'm sure there might be somebody who would do a much better job than me but uh, this was my humble attempt at trying to do an induction program or bring you up to speed with what moto gp is anyways um, i hope you guys have enjoyed this video please like share comment subscribe i will be leaving the links to my other social media handles in the description below so if you guys want to connect with me there please do so uh, thank you so much guys for all the love and all the support that you guys have shown me over the past and i'm really excited to be at the both international circuit after 10 years now <laughs> and uh, be a part of this motorsport event which hopefully should kick start a new chapter in the history of indian motorsport and it will be great to have uh, dorna and fim and uh, repsol honda and lcr honda and ducati and vr46 muni and uh, grassini ducati and uh, uh, prima pramac ducati and aprilia and rnf aprilia and yamaha and ktm and gas gas tech 3 uh, racing at this event um who would not love to see the likes of peko bagnaya and mark marquez and fabio quartararo and uh, marco bezzecchi and luca marini and juan mir and uh, jack miller or brad binder you know at our shores racing against each other and how can i forget even the youth like pedro acosta and tony arbelino or homa masia or dennis onchu you know in all the feeder series that might be coming and oh we also have a wild card entry uh, in uh, mr ahmed coming in moto 3 uh, racing with petronas so this is going to be very interesting and um, i am so excited about this event 
एनीवेज गाइस दिस इज किमी एंग साइनिंग ऑफ थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वाचिंग टेक केयर गाइस हैव अ ग्रेट वीकेंड एंड एंजॉय योर